So speak to any doctor that you know, and they're always going to talk about the fact that one of the most challenging aspects of becoming a physician in the United States is residency. Now, if you're a little bit unfamiliar, let me explain. To become a doctor in the United States, you have to go through four years of undergrad. After that, you go through four years of medical school, and then you apply for something known as a residency. And essentially, a residency, you can kind of Think of it as on-the-job training. You're basically going to be an apprentice in whichever specialty you choose. And depending on the specialty that you choose, the length of residency varies. Now, at this point, you've graduated medical school. You will have an MD or a DO, whatever you choose. It's going to be associated with your title, so you are a medical doctor. However, to practice in the United States, you have to complete a residency. And like I mentioned, depending on what specialty you choose, each residency has a different length. Some of them are three years, some of them are four years, some of them are up to five years, seven years, depending on if they require you to do some research. So depending on the fields that you go into, you have to complete a residency in order for you to be a practicing physician, licensed practicing physician in whichever state you want to practice in, in the United States. Now, like I said, if you ask any physician, one of the most challenging times is going to be your residency. Now, I did make a video before. I'll link it up here somewhere up on the top where I talked a little bit more about residency and why it's structured the way that it is. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's difficult. You, the hours are arduous. You're studying at the same time. You're pushing your body to the limits. You're learning a lot. And it's just a lot of work. So residency is difficult. Now, why am I talking about residency? Because there's one aspect of residency which I think makes it the most challenging. Like, what is the most challenging aspect of residency? And I feel like if you're able to grasp that before you begin your residency, I think it can really help you throughout the process. So let's get into that. All right, so let me talk a little briefly about me. So I did complete my first residency, which was three years of internal medicine. I did that here in the United States. After that, I practiced independently for one year as an attending physician. And then after that, I decided to go into a second residency. So now I'm about about three and a half years in to a diagnostic and interventional radiology residency. So I spent a large chunk of my life being a resident physician. So because of that, I feel like I have a little bit of authority to speak on it. So what do I feel like is the most challenging aspect of being a resident physician? Is it the lack of sleep? Is it the studying? No. I think what more, more than that is you know, if you when, when you go through medical school, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's this constant guilt. It's very difficult for you to disconnect from your work. That's understandable. You're dealing with patients. You're dealing with patients' lives. You don't want to do any harm. So you are stressed. You are stressed about that. You are thinking about that. You're thinking about your patients. You want to do what's absolutely best for them. But even besides that, you always have this cloud lingering over you and it's going to start in medical school and it's going to linger. And if you're a medical student right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're going to go out to the gym, if you're going to go out with your friends to eat, if you're going to be eating dinner, you're always going to have this thought in the back of your mind that everyone around you is probably studying. And you feel like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be hanging out. Maybe I shouldn't be taking this break because I should also be studying. And you always have this guilt within you that you, you could be using your time better. And that guilt, honestly, at times cripples you and can completely ruin your work-life balance because that guilt follows you no matter what you're doing. You might be just washing the dishes. You might be just doing laundry, but you feel like now you feel like you need to be doing something productive. You need to be doing something that is going to be tailored towards you becoming the best physician that you can be. Now, don't get me wrong. Even when you're finished with your training, I, I did work as an attending for a year. It does dramatically get better. But even after your training, your studying is not over. You're still always going to be reading, but it's different. Your life is going to be definitely different as an attending physician. I can't speak as a radiologist, but I can speak as an internist, a nocturnist. I did work as an internal medicine doctor for one year. So I remember when I was an attending physician, the entire landscape does change, but you still always have to read. But that guilt is what honestly was the biggest difference that I experienced from going from a resident physician to an attending physician. I didn't have that guilt. I didn't have that cloud over me. And that cloud begins in medical school, and unfortunately, it stays with you even during residency. 
Now, during residency, although you're, it's on-the-job training, you're going to be taking care of patients. You're going to be responsible for patient care. So you're going to want to do better. You're going to want to do good for the patient as well as your colleagues because you're all working on it together. You don't want to mismanage or make a mistake or miss something and make it more difficult for other colleagues that you might be consulting in different specialties. So because of that, you have a lot of pressure that you want to do well. So you're going to be constantly consumed with the fact that you need to be reading, you need, you need need to be studying and so that's going to be lingering on with you while you're throughout well while you're completing residency during residency you're also taking exams you usually take an exam once a month you take a in-service exam every year and then if you want to become a board certified physician which is the goal of every single physician who goes through a residency you want to be board certified you're going to take an exam so there's still going to be the pressure of exams but the pressure is a little bit different than medical school because it's more about patient care and becoming the best physician that you can be Another aspect that makes it a little bit challenging is the fact that now we live in the age of technology. And because of that, there's so many advantages, but there are a couple of disadvantages. Before, you'd have to be sort of in a library, you needed some books, you needed to be able to study that way. Now you can study flashcards on your cell phone, you can do practice questions on your cell phone, you can do it on your iPad, you can do it here, you can do it there, you can listen to podcasts while you're working out. There's so many different ways for you to gain knowledge which is, like I said, fantastic, but then it also makes it a little bit challenging because you don't know when to just stop. You don't know when to give your brain a rest because while you're doing other tasks, you know, I've been guilty of this too. While going to the gym, while working out, while doing minuscule things like laundry, while you're doing the dishes, you're still going to be listening to a medical podcast. You're still going to be doing all this stuff. And eventually you just reach this level of fatigue. And I really think that has, to, has a lot to contribute to physician burnout, which is another big topic that we can get into another time, but physicians get burnt out. And I think technology has a lot to do with physicians burning out. So although the hours of being a resident physician, the salary, the time that you spend in the hospital, the constant studying, all of that is difficult, but I really think the fact that it's so difficult to disconnect from everything that you have to do and the guilt that you feel when you're doing anything outside of the realm of your career that guilt is what really makes residency really difficult. So it's not going to be all doom and gloom. So what do I think you can do? I think if you know that this guilt is going to be something that's there and it's going to be prevalent, you can start working on it, even at the stage of a medical student, of how to combat this. So really what you have to do is you have to set small goals for yourself where you know that you can accomplish them. And once you accomplish them, you need to give your mind a rest. And you need to just get over the fact that you don't have to be constantly 24-7 consumed in your career. Granted, some residencies are longer, some residencies are more demanding than others. That's just the reality of medicine. Some specialties are way more demanding than other specialties. So some specialties, you're more likely to just become fully consumed with it. But either way, no matter what specialty you go into, everybody faces that same challenge. And the quicker that you're able to deal with not feeling guilty when you're taking a break, when you're doing other tasks that are just that are a necessity for life, the quicker that you can overcome that feeling of guilt, I really think that you're going to have a smooth transition uh, from residency to becoming an attending physician, and it's just going to make your entire residency experience better. And like I said, I have other videos where I talk more about how important I think residency is and how we get bogged down in the details and we don't enjoy the experience of residency. But I really think residency is a mindset. It's a marathon, a three to five to seven year marathon. So I really think having a healthy mindset while you're going through your residency is only going to make the residency so much better. So those are my thoughts. That's what I think is the most difficult and challenging part of being a resident physician. I still struggle with it myself, but I just wanted to put it out there and maybe help somebody out there. So, so if you're new to the channel, check out some of my other content. Consider subscribing and until next time.